everyone! It's Erin Anderson with the Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching. I am super excited that you have tuned in today. Let's get talking about how to heal from betrayal trauma. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. Really excited to have you guys here today. I have with me today Lenise Smith. Now, Lenise is a childhood trauma uh, expert. She really works a lot with people who are dealing with stuff that have happened to them in their childhood. And even though like they may, may have had a fantastic childhood, there's still things that we we misunderstand as a child. There's things that we don't uh, we don't know just because our brains are not completely developed yet, right? Right. And so we take understanding and misunderstanding and things throughout our life, and we carry them with us clear into adulthood, into our relationships, and oftentimes, um, and it's something that I've noticed too. You know, as I've been uh, coaching women and even men now through betrayal, trauma, and addiction, and, and, and all these problems, it's often rooted somewhere in this childhood trauma. And so I really felt like this was a great topic to bring to you, my audience, um, to help you understand like more about your trauma, why it's happening, and what we can do to help resolve it so you can actually get to a healing place. So Thank you, Lenise, for being here. Tell us a little bit about you, um, it, like what parts of your story you'd like to share, and uh, just just so my audience can kind of understand you a little bit. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, so <clears throat> I actually did not know I had childhood trauma until I was an adult. I had no memory of it. I thought I lived a very happy life, but as I really look back, I realized that it wasn't that happy. I fought depression all the time mm -hmm. and didn't understand why. And I think that happens a lot when you experience childhood trauma that your brain doesn't know how to process it and it can get stuck. And sometimes hidden away for years before those memories come forth. And so, when you have memories come forth, it's shocking. Like, how could that have happened? Am I making it up? Why am I thinking this way? And when someone who loves you very much or is supposed to love you very much and causes trauma to you, there's so many conflicting emotions. Yeah. Like, and so you can get stuck in that cycle of, I'm not good enough. I'm not loved, even though you're told that. Mm -hmm. so or even just sometimes believed it you know what I mean because like I you know we we all have different experiences growing up some people have really really supportive parents who love them nourish them are there for them right and then there's some people who have felt completely and utterly abandoned by their parents right right and and even like like it's there's there's no really rhyme or reason. It's just simply how we interpret a certain situation, right? And I'm not saying, right. like, like to my listeners, it's all in your head. Like, that's di totally disrespectful. No, you, like, there's a reason why you feel the way you do. There's a reason why you take in something to believe this way. And one of the reasons why is because when, when you're a child, you're, it's built within you to yes. trust adults right like you need yeah. adults to, to survive right and so we we need to trust them we need to rely on them and so because we know this from infancy when something goes wrong and this is this is what happens in the child psyche when something goes wrong and that child feels badly well it can't be the adult's fault because I have to trust them. So therefore it has to be yeah. something with me. Right. Right. Yeah. You feel like it's all your fault. Mm -hmm. That and maybe so, you did something that 
caused them to treat you that way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or even you you did something that not just even caused them to treat you that way, but like caused the problem, caused the perception, caused right, caused caused whatever it is. It's it's got to be your fault, right? right? And like, there's not a parent out there that doesn't leave scars on their kids and stuff like that. And I I want to be very clear that it's not always a parent's fault either. Right. right. Sometimes, mm-hmm. sometimes the parents really did everything they possibly could do, everything correctly, and the child still comes out with all of this trauma. Right. Yeah. Just because we're in life right now. Right. But it is still yeah. so incredibly important to resolve that childhood trauma. So, how does childhood trauma relate to betrayal trauma now? So. Well, you have this adult that loves you or you feel, you know, you've totally trust them and then they do something to harm you or cause you some trauma. You're, tr- you can't, you're trying to figure out, do I trust them? Do I not? Do they love me or do they not? Mm-hmm. And for me, I trusted parents totally 100% whatever they said was like the truth right Right, it was gold right Mm -hmm. and I think most children are like that they Mm -hmm. trust what they're being taught they trust that they're going to be treated good Mm -hmm. and and that mom and dad have my best interest in mind and yeah mom dad have their best interest Mm -hmm. and but we have this core truth inside of us that we're born with knowing if something feels good or not. Yes. So yes, if it doesn't that. feel good, our brains can't figure out why, especially when we're very, very tiny. Like it doesn't feel good, but they say they love me. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, um, there's conflict Mm -hmm. like what does this mean and sometimes it takes years to figure that out right 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 and you see that you know like uh coming up in our adult relationships too right um I know for me um you know I I look back at my parents and stuff and I can say, like, they tried so hard, right? Yeah. They, they really did. Um, And there's a lot of good things I learned from them. There's some not so good things I learned from both of them. Um, And, you know, that that's a fairly normal thing, right? Like, like I said, nobody is free of childhood trauma. And oftentimes, not oftentimes, all parents leave scars on the kids, even I. And I'm... I think I'm a pretty good parent, right? I I really do. (laughs) But, but I still live scars on my kids because I am living a mortal life. But, you know, I remember having some really deep seated childhood trauma. Some, there was definitely some abuse that happened. Right. Right. And, um, those thoughts that, that seeded, that seeded inside of me, they were able to grow and develop. And they went years and years and years without being unchecked, right? Like, like without right. being taken care of and without me even realizing that they were there because I was so used to them, mm-hmm. right? And so I get into my adult relationships. I have now, well, I don't now, but I had people that uh, were toxic in uh, my friendships, Right people constantly like mowing me over wouldn't let me say something constantly interrupting me right and I I was just like okay I'm just taught to sit down and be quiet right not say anything I don't have a voice right all of a sudden it comes up yeah and we hear things like um we get this from colleagues like neighbors right and you know even my husband bless his heart love him with all my heart and soul but I can see now that some of the things that I looked for 
were things that were not necessarily healthy but comfortable to me in these adult relationships yes. right even yeah. my husband and so you know one of the biggest things i personally had to do when uh dealing with my own betrayal trauma because i i i just couldn't handle it at one point right couldn't do it anymore one of the major things that i had to look to was actually my childhood trauma and where i can see like like my earliest memory of being traumatized as a child right right and because i could see like oh there's that path right like <laughs> here's where here's kind of where this whole thing started and now i'm seeing this major major path to where i'm at now so yeah what do i need to do to heal that right and we're going to get into that a little bit more in depth uh, as as we continue this podcast right but um so it, in layman's terms, let's discuss really quickly, what is childhood trauma? Trauma is anything that does not feel good. It could, there's so many different forms. Um, you could be in a group of kids and be rejected and not, they don't want to play with you. That can be traumatic for you. Mm -hmm. It's just not abuse. You can have accidents, you know, you fall down, get hurt, you, some trauma can form from that. Mm -hmm. um, I just know, like, talking to one of my siblings, they had an injury or cut something, and he remembers my parents saying, it's blood poisoning. It'll kill you if we don't get help. But they didn't go to the doctor immediately because they had to wait for an appointment. So he believed that they wanted him to die because they didn't take him to the doctor immediately. Now, he was young. He was probably like four or five years old. And that's carried to a, his adult life. Like, they don't love me enough to take me to the doctor. Now they want me to die. And it's just interesting how a child can think that they don't understand the big picture. Mm -hmm. And so they take one little experience and dwell on how that made them feel. And it carries on over the years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would maybe include mm -hmm. in that, in that description that, uh, you know, emotions are definitely um, a big piece of, of trauma right because you know society in general will teach us that um well, well yeah just society in general we learn that our emotions are scary emotions are bad right? right um and that and that we need to stay as far away from emotions as possible but <sighs> what that actually tends to do is keep us stuck in negative emotions, but numb us to them. And so we never really get the ability to feel joy, excitement, uh, peace, uh, prosperity, like um, love, like, like all these beautiful emotions that we actually do want to feel. We're stuck actually in the negative emotions when we say we don't want to feel right. Yeah. And so it's it, stuck. It's, it's, not that not something do, doesn't necessarily feel good. I think it's more or less that we take what doesn't feel good and we assign a meaning to it, right? I think that's kind right. of more like what trauma is. Um, because, yes, it definitely starts, like, not feeling good, right? But it's it's the way we think about it that creates the trauma, right? So, yes. for example, um, you know, a story I love to share, and, and you know, my listeners know, know this at this point that uh you know i went let's, let's see i've had three traumatic car crashes right never had a ticket i'm a good driver really <laughs> i am okay but um i've never never quite healed from that like even just going and getting on the freeway now right here in utah i'm like a little bit like white knuckling it constantly on guard like mm -hmm. looking for everything um it's brought some good things to me too because i can see anything that moves at night like literally anything right yeah. so i've never hit a deer 
<laughs> and my my husband and my kids are all like how can you like see all that and I'm like trust me like this yeah. is like trauma makes you hyper aware that's what yeah. it does right it does and so like it, it's something that's stored in my body but my brother-in-law had a traumatic car crash too he fell asleep behind uh this behind the steering wheel of a truck and um crashed into the side of a mountain going 75 miles an hour right and totally like accordioned that truck and he was stuck in there but yet to him you know after he got out of the hospital he got back in the car and just drove home right it was like no right. big deal to him but to me i'm still like just getting in a car still gives me just that teensy bit of anxiety right mm -hmm. and it, it's because of what i've t like the belief i've taken on right my brother-in-law does not have that same belief he's confident in the car yeah isn't that interesting right and so that like is. when i say when i say like you know our emotions are there i think more or less to kind of give us to get our attention right and this is not something you like i can tell a child like you know my five-year-old my two-year-old even my nine-year-old he's almost 10 actually but even him like they don't quite a hundred percent conceptualize that that right but to us when emotions are coming up i think they do they get our attention to a bigger problem yes makes sense and this is why i think it's really important that you know when we're defining trauma yes it's it definitely has that that emotional component but it also has that thought process component to it as well yeah a lot depends on how the people around you responded when you went through something traumatic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that affects you big time it does it does you know i think about like just that one thing you said like my son yesterday he's the sweetest best kid ever um, but he's also known for having really big reactions to really big emotions, right? And so, like, there's a good chance that he feels abandoned sometimes by me when he's having those big reactions, right? But I have to tell him constantly, honey, I can't understand you. I can't hear you when you're having this big reaction, right? I What I really need is for you just to come and talk to me. So I can help you then. Okay. Cause I can't help you if you're freaking out. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but that brings to illustrate, I think that point again, that, you know, you can have a really good parent. We still like the meaning we take is what creates the childhood trauma. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, being aware and stuff like that, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think that being aware of those thoughts and those feelings are so key um, and realizing how they, they transmute into our relationships now. So um, how does understanding our childhood trauma how does that help us actually start to heal ourselves as an adult? Well, you need to understand it and know how it has affected you. So for me, going through childhood trauma, I would not feel my emotions. Mm -hmm. It was not safe. Mm. It, it was not safe for me to express emotions. Right. Um, growing up and then even in my marriage, it was not safe. Mm -hmm. And so I would learn to just stuff them like, okay, I'm not going to deal with them. And that was something I had to learn was to feel emotions, like really think about how am I feeling and why? Mm -hmm. And I, for me, that was the first step to start taking was what am I feeling and why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so then you just start building on that and realizing you know what it's okay to feel angry yeah 
it's totally okay. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's okay to feel happy. Mm -hmm. It's okay to feel sad. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have emotion. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to express it. Right. And I think childhood trauma really affects that emotional processing. Yes. So, yeah. and that's, that's, I think that's really the really root that you have to go to in order to heal. You have to be able to verbalize, well, I feel this or I felt this and this is why, but you don't have to stay in that feeling either. Right. You can learn to move forward and like make a change in your life by feeling emotions and then letting them go. And that's one thing I really work on is helping people let go of the, those negative emotions and start bringing in positive. Right. Because when we get overwhelmed with the negative, we're more likely to lose our temper. Mm -hmm. um, every little thing affects us majorly. Mm -hmm. We'll have a big response instead of a small response. Mm -hmm. And so learning to deal with the emotions. Yeah, I love that because I think that's something that a lot of adults not not just something that I think it's that it's actually uh statistically proven that a lot of adults struggle with that one thing, right? Right. And you know, looking at my own kids, you know, I've got six kids, I even see them struggling with, you know, big emotions and stuff. Just cuz it is uncomfortable. Like we don't want to sit and be angry. We we don't want to sit and like we want to, we want to get through it as fast as possible and just be done with it, right? Mm -hmm. But like, I like what you're saying here that, you know, sitting in it for a minute, you can ask yourself questions like, how long have I felt this way? Yeah. Right. Well, what a beautiful question, right? You can often, again, like it, it takes you down a path of like memories, memories that have come up over and over and over again that have proven something some some sort of thought to you right mm -hmm. um so like for me this uh the feeling of being uh rejected right right uh you know w with my husband's struggles i definitely felt a lot of rejection with uh colleagues uh, some of them actually tried to sabotage my job. Oh, there we go. There's that rejection. Uh, in college, I had roommates that rejected me. I had some rejection from professors. I had rejection from friends in high school. Rejection from peers in elementary school. Rejection from mom. Right? And, whoa, look at that. Like, I just totally was able to find that path. Yeah. To why I felt that way for so long. And so, like, when you ask yourself, like, how long have I felt this way, right? You'll often find yourself going clear back into trauma. And yeah. that, that's a question I love asking my clients, like, right, how long have you felt this way? Because then we can actually start to address, like, like the root of this, like, where it actually started, yeah. right? But the other piece that um, I love also asking is just because this was the experience and you've experienced this over and over and over again does that mean it's true right mm -hmm. just because you see um <laughs> like like here's a good one to, to illustrate that we live in a highly sexual society like so it's very oversexed right Right. And so you see billboards of women in skimpy clothing and perfect bodies, right? And magazines with women with perfect bodies and, and perfect body, perfect body. You see it everywhere. Does that mean it's true? Like, yeah. I'm sorry, but women age. Uh huh. Right? We're all different sizes and We're shapes. All and... different sizes and shapes and. Sometimes, like, everybody's going to have some type of flaw, right? There was a statistic somewhere that everybody had some type of a birthmark, right, somewhere on their body. That means that mm -hmm. there's some type of a flaw there or a mole 
or you know spots age spots like like we're gonna gray that's the yeah. actual truth so why do why have we taken that that one image is the only image that's beautiful well it's because we've latched on to a lie well they make it look fun right exciting yeah and yeah but it's so unrealistic it is so crazy unrealistic right it is and uh you know not saying that a woman's only purpose is to bear children and raise them right like that's a beautiful purpose don't get me wrong i am so grateful i was able to do that but just bearing children <laughs> and <laughs> raising them right it takes a toll on a woman's body and it's never going to look that way again a lot of those images aren't real they're ai'd yeah. or airbrushed right a lot of them yeah and so you know it just kind of illustrates the point that just because we've experienced something over and over and over again doesn't mean that it's true right, right. we actually have to anchor into what is actually true what do we actually know right right what is actually universally true what is true on this planet and the planet in the next galaxy like what is true and when we start asking those kinds of questions we can actually start finding the universal truths to help us heal this childhood trauma like start unraveling it that has it's it, that's caused us all this stuff you know clear yes. into our adult life right so i know you mentioned you know that there's a lot of different tools a lot of different things that you love to do to help people you know that heal that inner child that that childhood trauma there's a few things that i like to do too because obviously like this is something that comes up a lot in my work too right so talk to me about some of the methods you use with your clients and like uh, how that helps them process and remove this childhood trauma Okay, so first thing is ident identifying their emotions and where it's coming from and why. Mm -hmm. And then being aware of the self-talk. Mm -hmm. How am I talking to myself every day? And just becoming aware of it. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, I'm doing this negative self-talk. What do I do with that? You and know, for me, it's it's simple. Just say, cancel that out and right? think something positive. And it takes practice. Yeah, it does. And, you know, and again, like looking for the truth. But, you know, it's really interesting. I love that point because, you know, I ask women all the time, you know, that the reach out to me. I'm like, how is your self-talk? And I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's great. And then I get them on a call and I, I'm listening to them and they're like so mean to themselves, right? We yeah. don't realize. We don't even we realize. We have no that, idea that, sometimes yeah. what we're doing. Right. We totally don't. But it's that inner child that's sitting there, like, trying to keep their world together. That's that's that self-talk, uh -huh. right? That's happening. Yeah. And, and they're panicking, and, and they're freaking out, and they're stressing, and they're like, ah, 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 right? That's mm -hmm. that negative self-talk. And that's that's one of the reasons why we ask that question is, is simply because we want to really hear what is going on. Like like that negative talk is so yeah uh, telling. It really really yes. is. And so when and it you, actually comes so naturally. Yeah, it does. You don't realize you're doing it until you start really trying to, to pay attention. It. Yes, yes, you're t you're so totally right and. So this is like one of the reasons why I say like, okay, like, let's actually take a look at the truth of the matter, right? For me, I anchor into God. Well, God doesn't make mistakes, so he may, and he makes miracles. So if I'm his greatest creation, what does that make me? Yeah. Beyond a miracle, right? Like, you've got to look into what your foundational truths are and build from there. Okay, because if right. you're sitting here, <laughs> I it's kind of like this. Like if you're going to build a home, like you're going to put the foundation up, right? And then you're going to build, start putting the boards up. 
But if you're going to hammer every single nail in with an axe, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> you're going to have a hard time building that, that yes. house. It's going to take right? a long time. <laughs> a really long time, right? You need to make sure that you're taking the time, like she's saying here, to really consider what you're nailing that house in with. Yeah. If 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 you're going to hack at yourself with an axe, you're going to feel weak. You're going to feel like unfinished, unresolved, undone. Uh-huh. Right? That's why right. we use a hammer. We don't use an axe to build a house. Right? So I love what I love that piece and it's so incredibly important. So my listeners, even if you think you've got really, really great self-talk, but yet you're still feeling like something's missing. Something's not quite right. Like your relationships yeah. aren't showing up to support you. Maybe you're feeling like the black sheep. I totally get that. But let me tell you, if you're feeling like the black sheep, you're also somewhere telling yourself you're the black sheep. Yeah, and I think you have to realize you're not the only one that feels that way. No. We look at society at the very best and compare ourselves to everyone else's very best, which mm -hmm. is, you know, no one is at their very best all the time. No. No. So. Absolutely. And that's so true. You know, um, and I think like this is another reason to, to be really aware right of your emotions again yes because everybody like you're saying is everybody is not always on their best unless if you're christ uh -huh. right but um when you sit there and you sit with the emotion for just a few minutes number one it'll burn out within 90 seconds as long as you're not re-triggering it right right but number two you're accepting the wisdom you're accepting what it is that we're learning and we're also starting to understand that this is a universal language, right? Yes. Like, I have a great friend from uh, Africa, and I, I talked, I actually was just talking to him today, and we were talking about this whole idea of emotions, right? Triggering us in, and how, how when we push them away, we're, we're actually resisting education we're resisting wisdom we're resisting truth we're resisting joy as well even if like like joy is attached to negativity often and yeah. and so we resist those things right we're pushing those things away but this is a universal language my friend he knows quite a bit of english but you can still tell like it's not 100 percent there right right i'm learning spanish but i am in no way <laughs> fluent at it right mm -hmm. but my friend and i can both understand sadness my friend and i can both understand anger my friend and i can both understand joy somebody that's spanish right this that is very fluent in spanish and not so much in english they can understand sadness they can understand joy they can understand these things because it's a universal language emotions are there to get our attention yes you know what i mean to just something, like something's not right, something's going wrong, right? It's, it's an invitation to get curious, mm -hmm. but instead we're pushing nice. it away, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's all it is. It's just a simple invitation to get curious. And the other beautiful thing about this is because it's a universal language, and it's something that God himself understands, he understands these emotions. He also communicates to us through them. Every single one. Yeah. This is why yeah. emotions bring so much wisdom. Is because when we sit in them and we allow them, it doesn't mean we act on them. It's the action that becomes bad, not the emotion, right? Right. When we sit and we just let them be. Don't try to yeah. push them away. Right? We just experience right. them. Give your time to feel. Yes, give yourself some time to feel these things, right? Yeah. This is why we also start gaining immense wisdom is because we are in that moment aligning ourselves with the universe, universal truth. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I like um, with my grandkids, if they walk in and they're sad, I'm like, I, you know, I ask them, are you feeling sad today? And that will help them identify, well, yes, I am. I said, well, did something happen that make you feel sad? And just ask, have them, you know, just ask them questions to help identify their emotion. Why? But then I also teach them, you have a choice. You now have a choice to choose the emotion you want to have. Mm -hmm. Do you want to still feel sad? And sometimes they'll say, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Mm hmm and for me, okay, I'm feeling sad, but do you want to want to stay here? Well, no, I don't. I want to feel happy. So what do I need to do to feel happy? Well, I think about my grandkids giggling and laughing. That makes me happy. Right. I love my kids when they live. And so, and then choosing how you're going to respond. Okay. How am I going to respond if I feel angry? Mm -hmm. Am I going to step back before I blow up on someone? Mm -hmm. can I train myself to stop and just feel figure out why knowing that you probably love this person and you don't want to cause them harm so how am I going to react you have a choice in how you react you have a choice in the emotion you want to feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I it's it. just, it's just coming down to training yourself and leaning into your agency. What a beautiful and knowing word. it's okay to have yeah. all these different emotions. It's good. Mm -hmm. I love what you're saying here. You know, like the idea that, uh, sitting in your emotion also gives you the clarity with how to use your agency in the very most most powerful and best way yeah right whoa that's a that, that's a concept right there right yeah sitting in your emotions gives you agency yeah and wow, i think it green like you can in your relationships you can think about okay they just reacted so for example one day I called my husband at work and he just laid into me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I got so angry that I hung up on him. Mm -hmm. And so, but here it is, it's several hours and I'm thinking, okay, I have a choice. How am I going to respond? What is happening in his life right now that's making him angry? Mm -hmm. It most likely has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. And so I made a choice and I'm glad I had a couple hours to think about it. So when he came home, I gave him a hug and I said, you must have had a really hard day today. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yes, I did. And he went into it and he was able to verbalize it. But if I had, if he'd come home and I got angry at him, he would have got angry back at me and it would have mm -hmm. gone on and on for hours. Right. Or days even. Right? Or days. Yeah. So we, it's up to us to diffuse the situations, having some understanding that maybe whoever we're with is struggling with some emotions. And thoughts, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And like and someone told me, think of the other person as if they're doing the best thing they can at this moment, the best they know how at this moment. Because you have no idea what they went through as a child. You have no idea what's happened today. You have not walked in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's times where we all lose it, right? Oh, yeah. And, and that's normal. But just to have more compassion for others. Oh, yes. Compassion is never going to be a bad thing, right? But I also yeah. want to mention, it's also okay to say, you know, please don't talk to me that way again, right? Yeah, I, right. I don't, I don't appreciate the way, the way that that came out, but, you know, I do want you to feel safe talking to me. I'm here to listen to you if you're having a bad day, right? Yeah. And, and also, 
I'm here to listen to you if you do have things that I need to work on. Like, like I do want to work with you, right? But I can't hear you if you're going to yell and scream and, and just, you know, come after yeah. me, right? Yeah, like, I've worked with ch my children. Like, they were very angry, upset. And every time as we were talking, and it was very heated sometimes, it would always go back to childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's the cause right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Right, right. And it's usually something anchored in that. And I agree with you, like, pornography, addictions, uh, addiction to drugs, addiction to control, addiction to your own hormones, right? Like, like it right. all stems down actually to something we've learned in, in childhood. It's, it's so true. So what are some other things you teach them about? Cause like, I love this whole idea of being like aware of your emotions. That's like so key and aware of your thoughts. So key. Yeah. What are some other things you teach? So the other thing I teach is gratitude. No, oh, I love that. Gratitude for the experiences you're having. What can I learn? from this experience what can I learn from this experience of abuse mm -hmm. um what has it taught me how do do I change my life because of it am I growing from it or am I letting it pull me down mm -hmm. the gratitude like gratitude for the gifts God gave me for my brain to do what it did mm -hmm. It was a gift from God that I did not remember my childhood traumas. Yeah. And I didn't remember until I had the support I needed to work through it. Right. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Well, you know, and sometimes, you know, uh, you know, as I've been studying trauma, you know, a lot of times like therapy will tell you, okay, let's talk it out, talk it out, talk it out. But oftentimes just thinking about it and talking about it just re-triggers you over and over and over and over again, right? And this is yeah. why this is why we use other methods like like the somatic practices, right? Like getting trauma out of your body, rolling around, moving, walking is so healing for trauma victims. Yes. I right? love so, walking and working through here. trauma. Same here. And because it's it's somatic, it actually starts activating both sides of your brain, right? And and, and yeah. getting your brain to actually work as a whole. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so important. But um, I also love this idea of gratitude, right? Right. Of like actually being grateful for the struggle. Like what? How can you be grateful for betrayal? How can you be grateful for childhood trauma? How can you be grateful for debt for crying out loud? How can you be grateful that your house got repossessed on Christmas? How can you be grateful for those things, right? Right. But here's the deal. If we go back to that, if I will just sit in my emotions for just a minute, I'm going to learn wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right? And that wisdom is valuable. It is. Very you valuable. learn, and then you can help someone else go yes. through. Yes. You and know, you learn the skills. You know what works for you. They just might work for them, too. Well, you know, I had a really interesting conversation with somebody a couple of days ago. They asked me, what makes you different than a therapist? Like, obviously, I don't have a therapy degree, right? I uh, I went to school. I studied to be an elementary education major, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, with that came a lot of uh, psychology. I had to have a lot of psychology uh, classes because you have to understand childhood trauma. You have to understand what's going on with a child in order to be able to, you know, help them yeah. in the very best possible way. You have to. But what we learn, our needs as a child are still our needs as an adult. What, what we learn as a child, we often carry through to adulthood, right? Yes. And so it was a really interesting thing for me to see those things. But... What I told her, I said, the reason why I'm powerful is because I've lived this hell, right? I have lived that trauma. You've lived it. And suffered 
majorly, major, major, major pieces I've suffered. Yes. And then healed it. And like, um, not saying I didn't, I didn't go to therapy. I did, but it wasn't until I really started understanding a lot of these basic principles as a lot of them, like you and I are talking about right now that I started actually healing therapy was great but the minute I was done with therapy I went back home and I was right back to square one Uh sometimes even less than square one right but as I sat in the emotions I allowed myself to feel them what I realized is I actually had a deep wisdom inside of me that wisdom was valuable Therefore, I must be valuable. Look at all of a sudden, like, my thoughts starting to change. Yeah. Naturally. Right? Right. I learn beautiful, beautiful things from all emotion. Even anger. Anger, if it's turned against yourself or or uh, your kids or, or your allies, right, then it becomes dangerous to yep. you. But if you turn that anger against your enemy, like the adversary, hint, hint, hint. Yeah, definitely. Right? Now all of a sudden you became dangerous to evil. Hmm. There's a thought, right? Emotions are good. I love this. Yeah. I love what you're saying, you know, and learning the art of gratitude gives you also this deep wisdom and it starts to shift it starts to change and you start to actually learn and accept truth and that learning and accepting truth gives you that deeper wisdom yes like so we all have bad days right oh yeah some days that we're like feeling depressed but what i've learned by identifying my emotions is you're gonna have bad days you just say yeah, I'm depressed today. Tomorrow's going to be better because I know I will not stay here. Mm-hmm. I have the skills. I practice what I teach. And tomorrow will be better, but it's okay if I'm feeling depressed right now. Yeah, it is. And I found when I get sick, I get depressed. Mm-hmm. And just recognizing, yeah, that's going to happen. If you're laid up for a while, you get depressed. And so I'm more aware of that and I can do things to help bring me out. Right, right. Not recognizing your patterns. I love that. Being being able to recognize the patterns. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And no one's happy, totally happy every day. Mm-mm. You're right. So. Even just now, you know, I mean, I've got an adorable little two-year-old outside the door. Like, yeah. <laughs> Right. And I'm like a little bit like you're adorable, but also a little bit annoying. (laughs) Right. right? But um, I love what you're saying again here is just being aware of your patterns, being aware of your thought processes. Don't judge yourself for them. Yes. Right. Be aware of them. But I also want to add to that. I think like. What would your best friend want? For you in those moments, like what would they be asking you? Right? Yeah. And like for me, like I get the whole depression. <laughs> You're sick. I hate being <laughs> sick so bad because I'm like, I've got too much to do. Stop it. Right. But um, I love saying to myself, oh, honey, what is it you need right now? Right? Do you need time off? Do you need, do you need to go paint? Do you need, like, what do you need? Let's, let's create that. Yeah. Let's do it. Right. Yeah. Do you need time to snuggle? You know, like Mm -hmm. you take an illness, whether you're sick or your child's sick and saying, yeah, I'm sick. I have extra time to read a book, to read to my child, to snuggle them, or I'm not running nonstop. Right. And so look at that. What am I gaining Mm -hmm. by being down? Right. Downtime. We all need that. We all need that. And sometimes our bodies will make us take it. Yeah. It's really important. Listening to our body. That's another thing that I teach. Listen to your body and what it needs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because bo your body will also, like, it stores trauma, it stores energy, it stores all those things. And so if you're feeling a little sick somewhere, if you're feeling a little sad, or if you're feeling like, yay, you know, yes, you, your body responds to all of that. So I love yeah. that piece. The one last thing that I would add to this, too, is bring love to everything. Yes, right? definitely. You know, um, I remember having to go back in my memories to that little tiny broken girl, you know, that was really, really struggling, really having a hard time and sobbing and um, going back as my adult self with the love that I have for children. Right? Yes. And picking that little girl up and snuggling her and just stroking her hair and treating her like she was my own. And that right. she was cherished, that she was loved. And it was amazing to see the shifts that happened almost instantly. Yes, I love doing that for my younger self. Going back, talking to that two-year-old or five-year-old or whatever, letting them know they're loved and they're safe. Mm -hmm. Just, you can do so much by going back to the those little yous that are still there. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're still there. And helping them heal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And loving them and appreciating them for what they did and the experiences they've had and letting them know that they're perfect. Yeah. They're still perfect. And like my therapist always tells me, you're stronger than you think. You are. You really are. And we all, we're stronger than we think. We can handle what life throws at us. We really can. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. may not be easy, but we can handle it. We can do it. We can we totally can do, do it. it. And to add to that, too, maybe sometimes we're not always meant to do it alone. Right? Right. Lenise, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. Where can people find you? Um, go to Bitly um, Butterfly Healy. That'll get you a free ebook and a free session with me if you'd like to learn some more. Love it. Go check out Lenise, you guys. She's also on Facebook, right? I'm so on Facebook. You can find me there. You can find her there. You can reach out to her there. Um, and in the meantime, my loves, thanks so much for hanging out with Lenise and I today. And until the next time, we'll see you on the other side, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and listening in on this podcasting episode. Don't forget to tune in next week. It's going to be awesome.